What's up YouTube? So, we're in my hunting room again, and I'm going to try and knock this entire video out, one sitting, no edits, we're just going to film it, post it. So, right now we're exactly a week away from Utah's opener, archery opener. So, I have an archery mule deer tag in a unit I've never hunted. Now, I work right next to this unit, in, and it's a desert unit. And it's been a hundred degrees at work. So the hunt's way hot. It's nothing like I normally like to do, which is get up high, get away from people. You know, every time I've gone out scouting and thought I found an area where there was going to be no people, I show up and there's four-wheeler tracks everywhere. You know, unmarked four-wheeler tracks all over the area. So found a couple bucks in stockable locations, smaller bucks. I've got an archery elk tag. And this year is Utah's first year ever doing the multi-season elk tag. And I bought one so I can hunt the archery season, the muzzleloader season, and the rifle season. Now on top of that, Utah also has the extended archery for both deer and elk. So I can basically hunt from August 18th until the end of December almost. So there's absolutely no time pressure put on me. You know, I've got a ton of time to do this. However, I do prefer the idea of shooting things with my bow. I just like bow hunting, and I like shooting stuff. I'm not a very good trophy hunter. There's probably a good chance that if I am given the opportunity, I'm going to take the shot, whether it's a big buck or a big bull or a cow because I also have a cow tag. So um, I've also promised to help a couple guys out um, their first year's hunting. I've I've agreed to go help a couple guys. I've, as usual, told people, you know, if you shoot something off the trail, give me a call, come help you pack it. You know, there's quite a few guys that have came and talked to me about hunting further off, the, you know, the beaten path, and I've let them all know if they need help, I'll, I'll come help pack because I've got a lot of time this year. So, anyways, let's get into gear. So, uh, a lot of this is posted on the website, and you can check it out there. I'm just going to go over everything kind of quick. Now this is a prime rival and a couple things have changed from the website. I've gone to a tight spot quiver, an AAE hot rods stabilizer setup. This bow is coming in weighing about 8 pounds. Now it is shooting, set this out of the way here, it is shooting a 660 grain full metal jacket dangerous game with a uh, Northern Broadhead, I went through, sharpened all my broadheads the other night, and check out the website, you know, you can see kind of my reasoning for it. You know, this is all set up, this bow set up, I don't plan to shoot over 50 yards at any animals this year, so I set it up to just crush up to 50 yards. So anyways, uh, Scott release, I will have a spare release in here, whether it is my Scott hinge or um, my other spare Scott release that my wife uses depending on if she's going with me, if she's practicing, if she's out of town. That'll just change as it goes. Uh, Z-Light pad cut up to sit on while I glass. I don't know how much that'll actually be used on this hunt. Um, I don't usually glass a lot for elk and these desert units, I'm not really sure if I'm going to spend a lot of time worrying about size. I may just take the spotter out, take that pad out, and hike, and if I see a deer, hike to him and see what, what he is, um, and see if I can't get a chance at him. So, short sleeve merino, black Ovis t-shirt, it's going to be hot, trying to keep down on the weight. Now, this is actually the core heavyweight hoodie, Sitka core heavyweight hoodie. This will not be going on the mule deer hunt, more, you know, this is more for if I go on the elk hunt, that's why it's not actually in the bag. Now, smart wool socks. Pretty self-explanatory. Prana Zion pants. Easily my lightest pants I own and my favorite. I wear these way more than I wear my regular Sitkas. And they're going to be a lot nicer to wear in the heat. Uh, this is an Alaska Guide Creation vinyl harness. Range finders just clicked on on the side. I've got a Petzl E-Lite and a uh, microfiber towelette in here. In this back zippered pocket I have all my tags, I have a map, um, I've also got in this I've got band-aids, I've got some super glue, uh, light, uh, mini lighter, a couple things, just kind of a survival thing and I have 
a post on the website about this also. Um, loophole 10 by 42s and then in the bottom of this is my DeLorme inReach so it is always on me no matter what. Now the backpack is a Kafaru Muscade 5000 with the new ultralight frame. Now mounted on the side normally would be the tripod which obviously is being used for this so I can't really show you how it would be clipped on but it would be clipped on in the same way as the trekking poles that are on this side. These are Cascade Mountain trekking poles, super cheap. So far, I've had zero issues. Um, I have to have at least one to pitch my teepee. So, yeah, I've got them both just strapped on at all times. I usually don't use them unless I'm packing out a lot of weight. Something new, body glove, wet shoes. They weigh almost a pound. I got them for creek crossings and to go fishing with. Um, you know, if I'm backpacking in somewhere to fish, I can wear these, not have to pack in waders. They're almost a hard felt, soft rubber. I don't even really know. But I'm going to try using them for stocking. They just, I don't know. They, they're hot on your feet, but they're quiet, and they give you some protection from cactus, which is a big problem in the unit I'm going to. And at a pound, I figured it'd be worth trying this year. Now, this is Sea to Summit compression bag. Now, with this hunt, I do not plan to have the DSLR mounted to my Peak Design strap on my chest. It'll be in here, inside of, uh, stuffed inside of some of my hoodies and stuff, because I do not want it hanging off my chest while I'm trying to hunt, and don't want it getting hung up in a bowstring and breaking or something. So inside of here, what we've got, Sitka Gators. Now, I plan on wearing these when I elk hunt, but I also plan on throwing these on for the desert mule deer hunt because there are rattlesnakes out there. And these are not, you know, exactly snake gators, but they're just an extra layer of protection. So Sitka lightweight gloves, uh, I believe they're the merino gloves, Kefaru beanie, Kefia, Shmog, whatever you want to call it, everyone's got their preference. I love this thing. I've used it for I've worn it over me to stay warm while I was waiting to ambush a buck out of his bed or, well, waiting for him to walk by after he got up out of his bed. I've used it to filter really dirty water before it goes into my Nalgene. I've used it around my feet in the winter uh, when I had my old sleeping bag and was trying to keep my feet a little warmer. Extra pair of socks. Smart wool again. Now this is the Sitka Core Lightweight Hoodie. Now this will probably be what I wear in the mornings if it's chilly enough on the mule deer hunt, but it may not stay on very long because it warms up pretty quick out there. Marmot rain jacket, and then in the very bottom of this is a Kelvin Active. I don't think I'm going to need this on this mule deer hunt. I'd probably wear it on the elk hunt, but I love this thing too much to not take it with me. I just love that piece. So, in here, this is a Kafaru Mega Pullout food, snacks, breakfast, dinner, drink mixes, everything is in here. Coffee, it's overstacked. I don't need this much for the first trip. And I'll, I'm going to trim it down a little more. There is a solo stove in here. Now the solo stove burns wood, twigs, leaves, things like that. There is no fuel canister. It also, I'm running the solo stove 900 pot and a CRKT extra large spork. It's, it's a lot lighter weight system, and since I could be hiking in and staying, or I could be doing almost, you know, like a day hike style hunt, I've, I've just got a lot of different stuff in here because I don't really know exactly what I'm going to do with this mule deer hunt. So, but I figured I would just pack it. Now, everything that was packed in this bag, I weighed it. It was 36 pounds, almost exactly on the dot, without water. So, at 36 pounds, I can trim down that food a little, but I really don't need to. It's really not a hard, a hard weight to deal with. Now, this is the Kafaru Slick 20 degree bag. Absolutely love this thing. I've used it without a shelter over me, and it just is such a nice bag. Now, in this front pocket, what I've got is an 82 millimeter Vanguard spotter. If I can get my clips undone. Now, this is something I'm still debating on whether I'm going to pack this because I'm not in, you know, I'm not chasing trophy deer. I 
really think that anything that's legal might get shot at. It, it will get shot at if I can get close enough. So I don't know if this is going to go with me the whole time while I'm hiking, but that's where it would normally be. Now this adapter on the end screws off, and what I can do is I can actually screw the camera, the DSLR, directly onto here, and I can actually digiscope through this with my DSLR. So that's why it's got this kind of funky looking end piece on it. So, like I said, I'm not sure if it'll go with me on all my hikes or not, but it's there in case I need it. Now, this is the Lux Hexpeak TP. As you can see, it rolls up pretty small, super easy to throw up. Um, you know, in, in really any situation, it's going to keep you protected. It's plenty big. So this is kind of rednecked right now. Uh, I've ordered a Kefaro Medium pullout, but it hasn't arrived yet. So what this is, this is just game bags stuck around my kill kit. Because I kind of think that might be about the size of a medium pullout. It's probably a little big, but I was just getting a rough size. So this is my kill kit. I've got Havlon knives, extra blades, uh, Hunter Honer, Quick Sharpener, Latex gloves, some more guy line. Um, Sharpie, some tags to market, some flagging tape, stuff like that. Just some, just some simple, quick kill kit stuff. And like I said, it will be in a pullout as soon as that pullout shows up. This is my stakes, my ground sheet, the rubber feet for the bottom of my trekking pole because I feel like it doesn't sink into the ground with that and it helps keep your TP at the height you want it, as well as extra guy line in here for the TP itself specifically. Some of it is cut to length already just for a quick swap. Climate inertia ozone sleeping pad, super lightweight. As you can see, it's already small and it's not even compressed down. Um, it is a not a very high R value, but I don't really need that with the slick bag and early season. I honestly don't switch to my X-Bed until it gets a lot colder even when I'm hunting up high. Now this is a Kafaru mini pull, or a small pull out. This has my first aid kit and all my kind of possibles, daily stuff, toothbrush, toothpaste, compass, fire starter. Um, there's a better breakdown of what is in here. On the website, it used to be two separate kits. I've now combined it into one. There's extra batteries, things like that in here. So that is that and if you want more info like I said check out the website so what we've got here in these uh, well so this is a Nalgene holder on the side I do not have my Nalgene in here I'm currently washing it after the Green River trip that is my binocular to tripod adapter Steri pen more guy line I feel like I've got way more than I need in here right now but just kind of how it played out SE Azula 2, I believe this is what this one is. Um, went through and sharpened it while I was sharpening my broadheads, so it should be good to go. And, yeah. So, one thing I am doing on this trip, this year is the first year using the DSLR. This is a Nikon point and shoot camera. I'm leaving it in here because I plan to keep the, the nice camera protected in the main bag. So I just kept one of my cheap, I had lots of old cameras. I kept it one of the cheaper ones just so I can take something really fast and if it breaks I'm not going to be too concerned. This is a Peak Design Capture Clip bag or this is what the Capture Clip ca capture clip came in. I've used this as a camera bag now. It's got uh, some, some glass cleaning spray, some brushes, microfiber towels, extra SD cards, my extra battery, stuff like that. It's all in one place other than the little blower because uh, it, it's technically still in my camera bag and I it doesn't fit in here so this is just a pencil and a little notepad uh, I usually pack it when I'm scouting and I've just decided to try taking it with me hunting and see if I use it at all this year or not there's my capture clip uh, I think I've shown that off before so but that is everything out of people whoops got one thing so in this pouch here, I've got a solar lantern, my regular headlamp, and then the extra straps that come from the far reach. So that is everything out of my bag. And then 
these are Loa boots. I don't even remember exactly which model they are. And I will probably be wearing these, not the Solomon 4Ds. Um, just depends. I might swap back and forth. If I'm close to the truck, I'll probably have both pairs in the truck, as well as inside the truck a work sharp field sharpener and a power bank. I won't be packing the power bank in. I shouldn't be gone long enough to actually need it. So that is everything I've got. That is a complete breakdown and kind of a quick idea of what might happen this season and what my expectations are, which is not a lot and to, you know, put arrows in the air. So thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, check out the website Amtarcher. Look for me on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, everything like that. And good luck to you, and hopefully the next update we have, there's some blood on some of this gear.